Hey guys, Jared here again. This should wind up being episode 6, and in this particular episode we're working again with my wife's 2016 Ford Transit Connect. And this time around, the honeydew that needs to be done is the replacement of the driver's front latch assembly. The door opens and closes just fine. However, there is a radio cutoff switch that is built into the latch assembly, and it doesn't work anymore. So, that's what we're going in to do. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, first thing we got to figure out how to do is how do we take off the interior door panel? The latch assembly lives over here. It has three Torx bolts that hold it in, but we got to be able to get to the assembly first because it has an electrical connector that also needs to come out. So question number one, how do we take this door panel off? So I already did some reconnoitering and I found out there are a couple of different screws in a few different places but they're all behind beauty covers so screw number one is back behind here and what I do is I take a small flathead there we go but we need to pull this latch get our screwdriver in there carefully kind of pop this out you want to do it from the left side and not the right this is why as you can see, there's a little tab right there. If you try to pop it from the right, you're going to break it. So don't do that. All right. Now, as you can see, there is a Torx right there. So that's number one. Number two, back here. So this lower trim piece pops out pretty easily. I can get it to behave. There it goes. So what I did is I came in from the left and just kind of wiggled at the top. It pops out and then reveals more Torx. So get that out of the way. And then over here, we have another beauty cover. Again, flathead. Just kind of Get up in there, pop it out, and we have, in this case, it is a, sorry about that, we have ourselves a Phillips right there. All right, lastly, we take a look down here, there is One more, looks like a Torx right there. So let me get those out and I'll bring you back. Okay guys, I am back after a bit of a fight. So these are what hold on the door right here. After you pull it clear, get the screws out of the way. Now, if you look at the guides that they fit into, see that? They open to one side. So what you have to do is on the back of the door you have to slide the door you have to slide the inside door card back towards you and that will pop out the back side of the door and then it's the opposite on the other side of the door take a look right there you have to push the, the door panel towards the front of the van, and then you can pop it out. So we got this out. We got it to the point where we only have electrical. One thing I also did with the camera off, you'll notice that the button panel assembly is missing. That popped right out. It's uh, sitting right here. There we go. And it only has a single, very easy to remove connector on the back. So I just went ahead and got it out of the way. Okay. So next step, we're going to need to take away the NVH barrier to get at the latch assembly, which is this lovely quilted looking thing right here. So I'm going to stop filming so I can work on all these electrical connectors, getting them loose if possible, because this... Hmm. Okay, that's pretty easy. Uh, yeah, looks like hard to, to 
film it. But there are... Hang on. Don't get seasick now. Okay, there's a connector here. It's got to go. And then there's a connector back here. I need to get loose. Once I get those two loose, the panel should come free. And then I can get the MVH barrier. Bring you back. Okay, so as you can see, I have peeled back. This is a combination of uh, NVH, noise, vibration, harshness, harshness, and weather sealing. So I peeled it back. Don't worry about this black goop right here. It's real tacky. And it absolutely, you can press your seal back on it. I'm going to throw a little heat on it as well to make sure it kind of gets a bit gooey after all is said and done. We now have access to the latch mechanism. Let's see if I can't. Yep. There's an electrical right there and then there's the actual mechanism. So we're gonna get at it from the outside. Uh, these are T27, these three. And then uh, previously, I forgot to mention it, the smaller ones I used, the smaller Torx I used, it was, there we go, dun dun dun, T20. So, T20 for all the, the screws that were holding on the door panel, and then a T27, take this off right here. So, let me get that off, and then I'll figure out how to take the electrical and the other stuff off. Hey guys, I am back, and I gotta say, this is the new part. I've got the old one out, it's over here, and it was a battle, an absolute battle to get this out, and I'll explain a little bit why. So, this is the correct orientation of the part, right here, and this mechanism has multiple rods and wires that are hooked into it that I didn't know about which makes it extraordinarily difficult to remove it is also screwed in in two places here and here into the side of the window regulator so if we look let me get my light here This guy here is the side window regulator path, or guide, whatever you want to call it, channel guide. And it runs all the way up to the top, and I popped it loose. I did a lot of, t basically a lot of tugging and pushing and, and whatnot, trying to understand how this all worked. And I finally got it loose, but it was not pretty and definitely not teachable. But this has got some... This has some plastic connectors up top that you just pop in. I think it'll be pretty easy to straighten this out. It also has an additional screw hole right here that you got to take care of. And there is a screw hole here that you got to take care of. And they are hidden with some little plastic stops. You take those off, you can take them loose. And that's for working on the and on the regulator but to get to get this off of that guide there is a cable that has to come loose here and that cable the other end of it is here so that's the end you essentially you can see this one's kind of beat up but you have to get enough slack to straighten it out and then pull it out it has a little plastic cover that mounts on it. It goes like this. Get the camera back over. Winds up going on like that. And that's designed to pop off, did not break, so we're good there. I gotta say, for this job, I'm very glad that this is a recent vehicle. I would have snapped anything and everything made of plastic on this. So that goes there. There is a, see here, there is another cable 
that connects into a little hard to see there it is it's down there into this eyelet hole there's no special bin that holds it there's a uh, stress relief that plugs in right here that cable is let's see if I can find it oh don't you dare pop the end out here so you can see it oh, it does have the little 90 degree detent so that goes in there and then there is also and this is going to be hard to see there is a metal rod of the same disposition that is inside yeah there it is There's the rod, and that metal rod back there plugs in into this plastic arm here. And I'll be honest, I am not sure how I'm going to be able to get this back in. In order to get the old one out, I snap that plastic arm that's supposed to be right here I snapped it clean off in order to get this out so the parts do match and I should be able to put it all back in there's also I got to figure out how it works there is a spring there's this little arm that sits like this and it pushes against the back on the inside and there is a spring and that sits at the bottom of the latch assembly got the spring sitting around here somewhere but I'm gonna take a look at this I'm gonna try to figure out what I need to do to try to get this back together and I'll bring you back once I have it reassembled because there's just really no way I'm gonna be able to show it hey guys quick update here so I have managed to see if you can see it. it's in the back corner there but I've managed to hook the rod back in and then I can show you from here, uh, there is, oh, okay, not enough light, but pull it back, sort of, there we go. So you can see that cable there? Okay, that I managed to rehook. So the next step is there's a screw. And if I'll grab one, there's two of them, there's a screw. There we go. I'm going to feed in from the top, get that back in, and where that goes in is here, where my fingers are, on the window regulator. It's kind of up in the corner, hard to see. Get that in, then I will need to reassemble the spring assembly, which fell off. I'll have to put it back on. It's held in place by a bottom screw that goes right here, where my finger is. Once all that's done, I'll reconnect the cable that goes there. And after I get all that done, I will actually screw back in the torques that go one, two, three, there and there. And we may actually get this job done. So I'll bring you back when I get more done. Where my fingers are on the window regulator. It's kind of up in the corner, hard to see. Get that in, then I will need to reassemble the spring assembly, which fell off. I'll have to put it back on. It's held in place by a bottom screw that goes right here where my finger is. Once all that's done, I'll reconnect the cable that goes there. And after I get all that done, I will actually screw back in the torques that go one, two, three, there and there. And we may actually get this job done. So I'll bring you back when I get more done. So, pro tip. After doing all this work, make sure you plug the electrical back in. It should be the last thing you do. And you'll know you've done it if the battery's still connected because the vehicle will unlock itself. So I'm gonna take one last look, make sure I didn't leave anything in here. I did drop a screw. And I think short of a magnet tool and lifting this uh, noise vibration harshness padding out, 
I'm not getting it back out. So what's going to happen in my case is there will be one less screw holding the door panel in. But I don't think it's a big deal. There's a bunch of screws for this one. So I'll bring you back once I start putting everything back together. So I decided that before I went any further with door reassembly that I would go ahead and test the window. Since I did really take loose the side window track in order to work on this. So we're going to make sure the window still tracks smoothly. Give me just a moment. Sorry about that. All right. Sorry, it wasn't filming that. So the window tracks down. Window tracks up, nice and smooth. Automatic window down works. Auto window up works. I'm not hearing funny noises. It's tracking smoothly, so I would say I got away with it and I managed to get it back in. Okay, I wanted to point out again about how the trim tabs work on this door to hang it. As you can see, zoom in, the tab slides in from one direction. So the tab will have to slide in like this and then lock into place. And you'll see it's the opposite direction on the other side of the door. So my plan of attack here is that I'm going to take the front side, which is right here, side closest to the engine, and I'm going to slide that on first because it was the hardest to get off. And then I'm going to tackle the back which is right here, side closest to the passenger sliding door, and that'll be the last part I get on. But I did a pretty good job in that the actual mounting tabs, which are these white guys with the seals around them, I didn't break any. I had one pop out, but it popped right back in. Actually, I take that back. It looks like this one broke. Actually, no, it didn't. It's just... Sorry, it didn't. It's just a, a shorter one right here. So I'm going to work on that. That's going to take two hands and I don't have my tripod on me. And when I'm done, I'll bring you back. All right, so as you can see, I have the door panel back on. And what I found out was that really you can put it on from either side. Just make sure that as you're lining up clips, because there's a clip and post system, there's the clips I showed, and there are also some posts that are part of the door panel that line up with holes that are in the metal part of the door. So when you line those up and you go to push in your clips that are going to be on this outer edge, what you can do to make it work is pull this plastic back and bend that bend the clip holder back just enough that when you push it in it'll just pop right in and this plastic is new enough and supple enough that i was able to do that and i stopped right here so that you could see which screw holes i picked to fill just remember i'm one short so i put a screw there because this is the door handle and i don't want this piece popping out these two here they go here they can't be used in other spots they've got the big fat silver heads and again that's to help keep this middle section stable people pulling on it the bottom doesn't have a lot of clips so I made sure to put a screw down here where it goes so the odd man out is gonna be the screw that's supposed to go here sorry the screw is supposed to go here behind the beauty cover so if I can get a hold of another little short torques I'll throw it in here down the road but for now there's a lot of clips right there and it does have some wiggle and I don't like it that's what this is to prevent but that's what I'm going to be doing for the time being so I wanted to show that I'm going to go ahead finish buttoning things up this will just pop right back in when I actually lay it out correctly it'll pop right back in I just need to put the electrical connector in and remember the bottom of our hand well That'll slide right back in. And then we put the beauty covers back on. And that's it. Quick thing to note, I messed up slightly here. Um, you're supposed to get the window controls and the power mirror control and that handle, that whole entire plastic piece installed. Then put your screws in. So these screws help to add strength to that handle to keep it from moving around. 
Okay, time for our big test. So the whole reason why I took this apart was because the radio automatic radio cutoff switch was not working. And how that's supposed to work is you turn the engine on, off, the radio keeps playing, but if you open the front driver or the front passenger doors, it detects that the door open, turns the radio off. So as you can see, I'm in the vehicle, it's running. I'm gonna do a functions check. Unlock, lock, unlock. Driver's window. All my windows are down. Okay, power mirror control. Oh, here we go. All right, so all that's working, and now for the actual true test. Key is out, notice the radio is still on. Open the door, and the radio turns off. So, successful repair. It was worth it. Now, let me show you why this was so hard. Here is the old door module, the bad one. This is how it sits in your door. That's the latch, you know, close the door and all that good stuff. That rod is supposed to go right there. Now, I broke it, I broke this plastic arm off to get the rod out because I, I couldn't see, I couldn't get it. So, that rod is nearly impossible to thread. It's an S-shaped rod so that once you get it in, it won't come back out. But with the physical dimensions inside the door, it is nearly impossible to put this thing back in. And somehow I managed to do it. Pure luck. I should have bought a lottery ticket yesterday. There's also a cable. Hooks in here. Right down there it's kind of hard to see now this one is spring loaded so it wants to stay down there unless you lift it up and try to line that up this one's not as bad it has a stress relief that plugs in here not too bad to get in and out and then here this is for the door handle this one's really easy you don't have to worry about it too much same time here at the top here at the bottom these two there are a pair of long hex screws that attach this module to the driver's window sidetrack i didn't know that until pretty far along in the process so those have to come out the rod has to be removed this cable has to be removed and it has a little s-bend fit uh, fitment on it so it won't come out so it's a hard to remove this has to come loose and then here at the bottom can't see it because I reused the part but there is a lever and a spring that are held in place by the screw at the bottom they sit right there where my uh, fingernail is and all that has to be reassembled blind you can't see it and then of course there is the electrical connector right here this is very easy so can you replace this module absolutely is it an enormous pain in the butt also absolutely small space probably needs specialized tools and you're doing most of your work blind so this is for a difficulty scale i'd probably give this one an 8 out of 10 I would not be trying to do it at home if you're on a time crunch or if you're not feeling like you've got a lot of mechanical skill. I would pick a different video in the stuff that I'm doing and maybe go after that. This one was really hard. It almost beat me. I was thinking pretty hard about taking this to a mechanic until I managed to figure out how to get all this loose and get this rod out. You know, I broke it because I had a new part with me. 
So, but that is going to do it, guys. This is a successful repair. I'm very pleased. The door. And it looks just as good as the first go around, which I'm really pleased. Generally, I wind up breaking plastic tabs somewhere, but this plastic is new and still pretty stretchy and bendy, so no worries there. And I will see you guys next time.